Hey guys, it is Mopar Monday here in West Virginia, and today we're unboxing an adopted Mopar. These guys did not become part of Mopar until 1987. The company I'm referring to is AMC, the American Motors Company. And nowadays when you go to all of your Chrysler Nationals, like in Carlisle and Columbus, you'll see a bunch of AMXs, Real Machines, Marlins, things like that. It kind of diversifies the show because these guys were a big part of the American like muscle car era with their trademark red, white, and blue paint jobs and such. Very cool to see them at the shows with all the vibrant, high-impact colors of Mopar. Uh, so, anyways, I was kind of really stoked when I seen this at the end of the last year to get one of these. I actually ordered two, but I passed my second one to a uh, Facebook friend, and I was going to unbox one and keep one carded, but I don't know, just because of the room situation, I'm just going to have a loose one. Um, I'll keep this package in case I ever decide to display it in the package again because the card art is really cool as you can see and if you did uh or if you do follow lamley he had some pics on ig of an actual real car from the 70s a yellow javelin that was done up just like this with the big ladder bars the jacked up rear end straight axle the whole car was setting up like a four by four looks identical to this die cast so this is actually one that existed in the 70s, just a different paint job. So anyways, on the back, they have a story right up of the car. We'll go over that in a minute. But this is another thing that's cool about these. They are numbered. And if you are a member and you have not got one yet, they were available in the shop until yesterday. They probably still are. I think a lot of people underestimated how nice the casting is and such so i think this will be a sleeper in a couple of years it will be worth a lot more than it is right now but this is number 10,929 of 30,000 and the other one i bought was 10,926 i believe so they are uh consecutive numbers when you buy two well mine were anyways i know it doesn't happen with everyone so let's get him out of the protector pack and take a look at his story and as such. Just so on the back here, it tells you a little bit. Thanks to its stylish body and racing capabilities, it's no surprise that the 1971 AMC Javelin AMCX was well received in car culture. Hot Wheels is getting their 1970s freak style on, on with root beer spectra flame paint entwined with 70s style greens and yellows throughout. This car was about more than just looks. They were often outfitted with performance enhancements from increased uh, engine power to aftermarket exhaust systems. This model holds true with exposed engine and multi-piece leaf spring molded suspension and ladder bar details for a rounded out look and feel with a color Story like this one can't help but tr be transported back to grandma's 1970s style kitchen. So, I'm going to go ahead and try to get him off the card here. I have not broke him loose yet. Um, sometimes the glue on these come off pretty easily. Sometimes they don't. So I just do it the same as I do any of them. Just kind of try to finagle my finger around the edge and hope for the best. This one I don't think is going to be so cooperative as some of the others. But it's not too bad. Could have been worse. So, they always have a PVC window on the back side so you can look through and see the car in case you do not want to un unbox it. And then there is another piece of PVC that keeps the car in place on the back side from flopping side to side. But myself i like to get them out because i think especially if you're in hot and humid conditions that this pvc plastic has a bad reaction to the paint after so many years so this unlike johnny lightning zingers is a lot more detailed and believable what i mean by that as you can see you down in the motor compartment you can see the headers 
and such. And I know on Johnny Lightnings, you can see the, where they exit, but they usually don't hit the whole motor. And if they do have the whole motor, it's a little bit under size. This one seems to be spot on with the car. I know Green Light is another company that has very small engines for 164th. So Hot Wheels nailed it with accuracy with the size of the engine. And this is one of their castings I believe to be true to 164 scale or be very close. So looks very good. Um, can't tell if the ports in the center are Siamese. I think they are. So it's going to be based on like a small block Chevy engine or an actual like AMC style engine. But a lot of AMC engines were Ford and Chrysler engines. <laughs> so anyways, um, you can see the detail of the window trim, nice saddle beige interior. Uh, and that yeah, the tri uh, the not trim but the stripes the pinstripes everything looks really good man it does look like something straight from the 70s you have your chrome well well trim there nice detailed grill with the mesh detailed headlights and your marker lights there then flipping around to the back side nice details on the tail lights nah, trying to get it to focus here there we go. And the plate says freaking. So it's kind of cool. Um, you can miss, um, like, interpret it and think they're saying the other word. But, um, yeah, it is freaking cool. So you can see it even has the trunk lock there, up there in the wing area on the back of the deck lid. These almost look like a hatchback, but they were not. Um... And then flip him over for all the intricate detail on the base. Now, this is something I wish they would do to all of their gassers. Like the 55 gasser, the supernova gassers. I wish that they would make this like straight tube front end with the uh, axle going through because you can actually see through it like a real car. On the 55 gassers, the supernovas and all the other ones, they have this big block there and it just looks horrible. It looks like a kid's toy, which it is designed to be a kid's toy originally. But the ones that come straight from RLC, like the supernova was originally designed for RLC. It should have been set up like this. That would have been awesome because this is very accurate to the real deal uh and then you can see how the oil pan and such goes right up there to the engine and then you have your transmission with the dry shaft now this is straight from johnny lightning though this rear end the way it is with the chrome leaf springs and such the big ladder bars and everything um the johnny lightnings though usually have separate ladder bars and the rear end I think is usually molded to the casting but this isn't this is all separate stuff this is very nicely done this is actually the way all of their gassers should be done in my opinion maybe not so high up in the back let's sit him down here on the table to get a more accurate look at him I'll drop the camera down here that way we can look at it together. Yeah, it has that rake. So if it didn't have so much of a rake and you drop that back in down, that would be awesome for the gassers that they have, like the 55, the Supernova, the Cyclone, all of them could use this front end. That would be so cool because this is spot on perfect for the way a gasser should look with a straight axle. So, very cool piece to have. So, if you guys like gassers, you have to get this car for your collection. If you like Hot Wheels and you collect gassers, this should be a must-have for you. So, that is it for our Mopar Monday, guys. We'll be back again tomorrow. I have a Johnny Lightning 2 for Tuesday with some Pontiac Grand Ams from the 70s. Pretty cool cars. So, be sure to tune in tomorrow to check that out. And enjoy your start to the week. Thanks for watching.